Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well and starting to settle into the rhythm of your new online classes. This week I'm going to talk a little bit about assessment. As educators, assessment plays an important role in our work. Assessment can be used for all sorts of reasons. It's often used when placing students in classes. For example, at UAA, we use assessment measures to decide if a student should start in Writing 111 or if, she, or if they would be better served by starting in a different class. It's also used for high stakes things like assigning grades, deciding who gets a certain scholarship, admitting students to colleges, or promoting students to the next grade level. In the everyday lives of teachers and students, assessment helps us figure out what to teach, to whom, and when is the best time to teach it. Assessment also helps us evaluate ourselves to figure out what's working, what's not, and what we need to reteach in a future lesson. There are many different types of assessment. For this lecture, I'm just going to focus on one distinction between what's called summative assessment and formative assessment. Summative assessments are the obvious ones that you're probably already aware of as a student. They are usually high stakes, meaning that they have larger consequences for students, teachers, and schools. They evaluate learning, usually after instruction or learning has taken place. This sort of assessment includes things like exams, final projects, and large-scale tests, such as PEAKS, which is the statewide assessment used in Alaska, the SAT, ACT, or Praxis. In this class, things like our unit quizzes and the final linguistics and action project are considered summative assessments. They let me know after the fact what you have learned. Formative assessment is different, and you might not even know what's going on as a student. These assessments are low stakes, meaning that they aren't attached in a big way to grades or placements and those sorts of things. They are used to monitor learning, and they happen in the flow of instruction and learning. They include things like observations, feedback on rough drafts, plans, responses, and conferences. In this class, things like our homework assignments, in-class and online discussions, and our upcoming conferences are examples of formative assessments. They let me adapt my instruction to what you need at a particular time. As part of the Linguistics in Action project, you will need to do a careful assessment of all of the students' writing from a grade level you picked. We're going to practice a simple assessment procedure, which can be used as a formative assessment over the course of an entire course or school year to track students' progress and make instructional decisions. To model the assessment procedure, I'm going to use a piece of writing from Mai, who was one of my former students. At the time, she was in seventh grade and had been in the United States learning English for about a year. Her first language was Hmong, which is structurally very different from English. But as you can see from her writing, she made a lot of progress in her language development in a relatively short amount of time. This was one page from an informational website she was making in an after-school program in a class about website design. She made this website to answer all of the stupid questions people always asked her about being Hmong. As she wrote, the Hmong school year occur only once every year. It usually occur in December, but in Metropolis it occurs in November because of the weather. The Hmong New Year is the time when people would go and meet other people. When you get to the New Year, you usually go and play the ball game. The ball game is when two person or more throw the ball to each other. If you have a boyfriend or girlfriend, you usually play the ball game with them. The new year is a time for girls and boys to come and meet each other. Performance always occur during a new year. The performance are singing, dancing, and playing musical instrument. In Thailand, or in Laos, the new year lasts for more than two days. In America, it only lasts for two days. Anyone could come to the new year. So looking at this writing sample, there are lots of things we might work on with Mai. For this assignment, I'm asking you to look at each of your students and pick two to three linguistic topics. So for Mai, your, your list might look something like this. There are two inflectional endings that Mai is working on. One is the plural S suffix. For example, she says, performance always occur. 
and the performance are singing, dancing, and playing musical instrument. Another is the present tense as suffix. The new year lasts two more two or more days, and the Hmong New Year occur only once a year. Note that these are two different inflectional endings, even though we represent them both in the same way in English. One attaches to verbs and the other to nouns. We can see in her writing that sometimes she's using them correctly and sometimes she's not. So this is actually a great topic to work on with her. That usually shows that a student is ready for direct instruction on a topic. There are also lots of other topics we could work on with her, including some punctuation issues, word choice, etc. In this case, I noticed some repetitive wording in her writing, so I could also work with her on varying her language. Notice that all of these concepts are things that show up repeatedly in her writing. In this sort of assessment, you're looking for patterns that are worthy of instruction, not just typos or one-time mistakes. All of these topics are developmentally appropriate, too. If we look at the Alaska standards, these topics line up well with the expectations for seventh grade targets for conventions of seventh grade English. Because she's an English language learner, the English language development standards are also useful and explicitly point to these topics as appropriate for an English language learner in the seventh grade. After assessing my, I would assess all of the other students in my class too. This would help me choose appropriate mini lesson topics and group students who would benefit the most from my instruction. Now it's your turn. You should have picked one grade level from the paper sets for your linguistics and action project. You'll need to identify two to three developmentally appropriate linguistic concepts you would address with each student and provide evidence from the writing samples to support each focus. Once you have picked a mini lesson topic and we've discussed it, you'll need to revisit all of the papers in your set to decide which students would benefit the most from instruction on that concept.